Hi, hello. Welcome back to the course on mechanical measurements. I am Nilambika Yen from the Department of Collegiate and Technical Education. We will be discussing today the unit 2 that is transducers and strain gauges. This is session 7. So, before we let into the session 7, we will go through whatever we have learnt in the last classes. Last class, that is session 6. The last class, we saw the introduction to the mechanical strain gauge. The mechanical strain gauge is the one where we are using mechanical means for the magnification. So, it is also known as berry type mechanical strain gauge or extensometer. Here, we are taking the displacement and to measure a strain. So, in a berry type mechanical strain gauge, what we saw is we had one specimen where a uh, tensile force was acting and we had two gauge points where one was one knife head was fixed and another gauge point was connected to the magnifying lever and that magnifying lever is connected to the dial indicator whenever a force is applied on it so this uh, on a load member the gauge point used to move the moment how much it is moved or how much the length is increased that was given input to the dial uh, magnifying lever that magnifying lever was uh, connected to the input to the dial indicator straight away we used to get the reading this is a simple type mechanic strain gauge so here by getting by uh, changing the distance or displacement we are getting a strain in the gauge we, we can measure the strain in an object and the next we saw advantages of barrier type mechanical strain gauge the first thing advantage it has it has a self contained magnification means the magnifying lever ma was already installed in the strain gauge and the second was no auxiliary equipment is needed as in case of electrical strain gauge means uh, it doesn't need any extra support device but if you take the an electrical strain gauge uh, we are having like cpu and an another but here we doesn't have any extra auxiliary device and the next thing it is best suited for statics test so here dynamics test it's not preferably so it is best suited for static load conditions and the next one is it is simple and uh, simple in construction and application so construction is also a simple and the application also is simple and the next we saw the disadvantages of very type strain gauge the number one it has high inertia and the second we saw it is not already said it is uh, suitable for static in disadvantage it is not suitable for dynamic measurements it has the next we saw is slow response so as soon as the displacement occurs directly uh, instantly we are not getting the strain so it takes few seconds you know, for the dial to move here because so the input it takes after few seconds we are going to get there we have movement is there in mechanical strain gauge so because of this response it has slow response the next is no method is incorporated for to to record the readings automatically here uh, after getting the readings if you take another test uh, the old record it is not automatically we are not reading in there is no other device to keep the uh, previous readings so this is one of the drawback of very type mechanical strain gauge directly you can get the present reading but not the previous readings so there is no such device to record those readings 
the next is more surface area is required for in specimen surface area for the measurement so the full whole maxi maximum area of mechanical strain gauge is specimen is seated on the specimen where is it is to be measured so it reads more surface area equipoise more area on the specimen itself this is one of the disadvantages of mechanical strain gauge the next one we saw the application of berry type mechanical strain gauge so the berry type is a application we use maximum in civil industry civil construction such as bridges tunnels roads so these are some of the application of berry type mechanical strain gauge then we saw some of the sample questions from this session and we saw some mcqs so now in this session we are going to discuss the number 1 introduction to a optical strain gauge we we'll, we shall learn what is an optical strain gauge in the next optical strain gauge that is zuckerman's optical strain gauge next we shall see advantages of optical strain gauge next we shall see disadvantages of optical strain gauge then we are going to see some of the sample questions from this session and we shall summarize the session whatever we are going to see in this session then i'll be giving one assignment to you the next we shall conduct test that is a favorite mcqs multiple choice questions i'll be giving questions you need to write down the answer i want you also to be involved and enjoy this sessions let's start with the first introduction for optical strain gauge optical strain gauge is a one that uses optical technology for the measurement of strain in an object optics means we use lens okay optics are lens so we are using that kind of technology so in mechanical measurements what we used mechanical means for was using for to measure the strain here optical technology we are optics text we are technology we are using to measure the strain so here the then force is applied on an object the change in the dimension is measured by the change in the light of transmission it detects change in light transmission when the object to it experiences a load so optical strain gauges have some form of optical lever to measure the small displacements the most commonly used optical strain gauge was developed by lb tukerman this is lb tukerman's strain optical strain gauge it consists of two parts one is autocollimator uh, in optical strain gauge we have optical means uh and mechanical means both are by combination of both we are constructed a optical strain gauge so in mechanical means a part it is extensometer and if you take optical means it is a auto collimator now we shall see what is the function of one one parameter here the so number one is here we are having a reflector the function of this reflector is to reflect the light okay the next one is we are having adjustable eyepiece here is a eyepiece here uh, through this eyepiece you are going to see the reflected ray and the next we have lamp lamp is a light source of rays we are going to get it now here we have auto collimator auto collimator the function of auto collimator is to send the parallel rays to the specimen 
or the prism into the lenses and receive back the rays. So autocollimator function is only one. It sends the rays and also it receives back the rays, reflected rays. The next one we have objective lens. The objective lens, the function of this objective lens is to uh, enhance or it has to magnif enhance or magnify the rays. Okay, it will enhance the magnification of the rays. The next we have prism. So, uh, lamp means we will be getting number of rays. But we have to take only a single uh, ray. So, this prism will uh, divert other rays. It will make sure only single rays to make it fall on the lesson so that we can get the proper reading for the single ray. So, next we have lozenge. Lozenge is uh, here uh, gauge points are nominal length of this parameter is knife edge and to the lozenge movable loz lozenge point. Lozenge it acts as a mirror. So one side is uh, polished. It acts as a mirror. Now the rays are falling. So here we have tested test specimen we have where uh, for this we can apply the load here uh, we are having prism adjusting to where we can adjust the prism now first uh, this is a lozenge it is which can be moved if it, it rotates if the light from this prism falls on it it gets reflected now uh, Let's consider now there is no load. One race is coming. It is falling on this and it is getting reflected. Suppose now I am applying a load on it, a tensile force. What will happen? One race will come through this objective lens. It will be falling on the prism. This prism makes this will get tilted. So, either deformation or this side. So, when it gets tilted, what happens? Either nominal decreases or increases because of this deformation. Okay. And prism, before the ray was, uh, before movement, the reflected ray was here. So, what happens? After... Uh, force this is stretched this will rotate what happens the rays also falling on it it gets reflected the image we cannot see at the same point it will be either this side or this side so the distance here we can displacement the way what we are getting here it will be the strain of this specimen so, by how much distance it tilts, the same image we are getting, the same distance we are going to get here. So, this is the function of optical strain gauge. So, I would like to explain one more time. Here, we are having a specimen where we are applying a load. The nominal gauge length is from knife edge to the lozenge. Lozenge E of tungsten material. It acts as a mirror and it is a movable. We have mechanical part as extensometer. We are having objective lens. The function of this is to magnify the image. Function of autocollimator we have. It sends the rays and receives back the rays. We are have adjustable IPs where we can view the image. We have reflector where we, we the rays are going to reflect here. We have prism where it will send the proper rays to the lozenge. Single ray to the lozenge. Clear with a clear vision. Now, before we are we have lamp source where number of rays are falling here. So it will pick only one race, it makes to 
fall on this and the rays is reflected here now if before applying load we imagine the same reading is here the point we are getting here so usually we place a scale here but in this it's not there okay now when we apply a specimen what's happening a rays is falling when a load is applied it is getting it gets tilted one side it is already polished which acts as a mirror now the ray which falls here after a deflection it moves to little further distance and it gets reflected at this point so the, the image previous image was here the next image would be here or here depends upon how much it is stretched so this distance would give the displacement would give the strain of an specimen okay i hope this is clear already said it combines mechanical and optical system consisting of extensometer made of steel or alloy and an autocollimator and the nominal length can change distance from the knife edge to the point of contact of the lozenge the next the lozenge acts like a mirror the distance between the fixed knife edge and lozenge changes due to loading then the lozenge rotates and if any light beam falling on it will be definitely it's going to be deflected okay the function of auto collimeter is to send parallels and receive back the reflected light beam from the lozenge on the optical system then the relative moment of the reflected ray we can view through the eyepiece eyepiece of the auto collimeter is calibrated to measure the strain directly this gauge can be used for dynamic measurements of up to 40 hertz using a photographic recorder and strains as small as 2 micrometer per meter can be resolved gauge lengths may vary from 6 mm to 250 mm we have some of the advantages of optical strain gauge number 1 the position of auto collimeter need not to be fixed relative to extensometer and the reading can be taken by holding the auto collimeter in hand some of the disadvantages or limitations of optical strain gauge are it is limited only for static measurements so because the light lens is very sensitive here yeah, small 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 cracks small deflection can be measured but not huge load like in mechanical strain gauge it is large gauge lengths are required so it cannot be used where large strain gauges are encountered we shall see some of the sample questions from this session at the end of exam they may ask with neat sketch explain optical strain gauge sketch the optical strain gauge and label its parts so now we shall summarize the whole thing optical strain gauge here optical technology is used to measure the strain of an object so we are tucker mans optical strain gauge what we are doing here in this mechanism tucker mans 2 um two parts we have one is optical part auto collimeter and mechanical part extensometer so opti uh, auto collimate the function of auto collimeter was is to send a rays and receive back the reflected rays so another part we had objective lens where it magnifies the reflected ray in the next we have reflector so reflector is one which is used to uh, receive back the reflected ray and next we have prism where it sends 
filters and clears only single ray to the lozenge. Lozenge acts like a mirror and one cell is polished. It is made up of tungsten. And the next uh, we had IPs where we can view the vision. Now when the rays fall on the when the load is applied to the specimen the nominal length was between knife edge to the lozenge movement point of contact of the lozenge when the load is applied lozenge will used to move and when the rays fall on lozenge lozenge used to move some distance though the rays will fall on lozenge and it's get uh, back to the it's get back to the autocollimeter or at a reflector point so the displacement how much it is moved we can uh, see in the reflected part in the autocollimeter so it is used to measure the strain the next we saw some of the advantages on the advantages was the position of the autocollimeter may not be fixed related to the extensometer so we can uh, we can the reading can be taken by holding the autocollimeter in hand there is no such fixation so this is one of the advantages of auto uh, optical strain gauge so some of the disadvantages of optical strain gauge are it is limited only for static measurements for dynamic measurements we cannot use this optical strain gauge if you have large gauge lengths are required for the measurement so if the gauge length is small so we cannot measure strain by using this optical strain gauge and the next we have it cannot be used where large strain gradients are encountered right so if the gauge length is small we cannot we can measure the next uh, if you see some of the uh, I would like to tell some of the applications of here is it detects small cracks and the materials defects in the other part like aircrafts. So in cave aircrafts if there is any small defects at marks cracks marks so this strain gauges would identify in their aircraft and wind turbine blades. So these type of st optical strain gauges are majorly used. We saw some of the sample questions from this session. So assignment is there. List applications of optical strain gauge. So if you search you are going to get lot of applications of optical strain gauge. Try to list out it. Now we shall conduct a test. I hope you all are ready to write the test. Multiple choice questions. I will be giving some questions. You write down the answer. The number one. Mark true or false. An optical strain gauge has extensometer and an autocollimator is it option a true option b false an optical strain gauge has extensometer and an autocollimator is it true or is it false the solution is true yeah obviously optical strain gauge has extensometer also and also autocollimator for our in a mechanical strain gauge we used to call it as a extensometer here in optical we are measuring the strain by using two uh, part optical and also mechanical this is a optical part autocollimator this is a mechanical part okay it's a true let's go to the second question mark true or false an optical strain gauge is limited only for static measurements once again i would like to read mark 
true or false an optical strain gauge is limited only for static measurements option a true option b false the solution is option a true yeah an optical strain gauge we can use only for static measurements the next question is in optical strain gauge dash acts like a mirror means which part of the optical strain gauge acts like a mirror number 1 extensometer 2 prism c lozenge last objective lens in optical strain gauge dash acts like a mirror which part of the optical strain gauge acts like a mirror option a extensometer b prism c lozenge d objective lens the solution is c lozenge lozenge because one part of the lozenge is polished it acts like a mirror i hope you all enjoyed the session i would like to end this session with a quote from abdul kalam he says dream is not what you see in sleep it is the thing which doesn't let you sleep thank you